The first thing that happens to this person when he is on his deathbed, his family are sitting all around him. The angel of death descends upon this person. You are surrounded by your family but you feel so alone because only you can see these angels. And you are trying to say to your family, help me, help me, but they can't help you. And then he says, oh evil soul, come out to the anger of Allah and his punishment. You're in your grave and you can hear your family's footsteps as they leave you. But do you have anywhere to run? Do you have anywhere to hide? Do you have anything that you can protect yourselves with? The fire of Jahannam, it enters into his grave. And his grave, it squeezes him so tight until his ribs begin to close up on one another. The coming of help. And hellfire, brothers and sisters, is not a pit. It is a roaring, raging beast that is held down by 70,000 chains. Holding each chain is 70,000 angels. There is no scene more terrifying on the Day of Judgment than that scene. Every creation of Allah, martyrs, prophets, Believers, non-believers, they will fall to their knees. All they are saying is, Oh Allah, protect us. Oh Allah, protect us. And the hellfire is a place of the most extreme suffering, the most extreme pain of every level that you can imagine. Physical, mental, spiritual pain and suffering and torment. The people will cry in agony for water. They will cry for a drink, something to cool them, and they will be given a water. They will be given a drink, but it is a boiling water that will scald their faces and burn their insides. This is the hellfire. The guardian of hellfire, his name is Malik. He has never smiled since the day hellfire was created. He has no remorse. He has no feelings of sensitivity. He is desensitized to all types of horror no feelings doesn't feel sorry for anyone hellfire ya akhwan, is something wallahi not to be taken lightly saying oh our lord please take us out take us out and let us try again give us another chance if we do this again then we are truly oppressors to ourselves and allah doesn't even reply to them allah doesn't speak to them so some people have false hope God will forgive me. God will forgive me. You're sick. You're ill. You need to cure yourself. God cannot be fooled. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We live in this dunya as if we are always going to remain here. Many of us, we don't think about our moment of death. Many of us, we live as though this is where we are going to remain. As though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us life forever and we are going to remain on this dunya for all time. And there is not a single person here who knows what his moment of death is going to be like. The first thing that happens to this person when he is on his deathbed, his family are sitting all around him, his loved ones are making dua for him and this may be us the angel of death descends upon this person. The angel of death and his deputies, they come and they have black faces. And this is a creation which you have never seen before in your life. And at that moment, you are surrounded by your family, but you feel so alone because only you can see these angels. And you are trying to say to your family, help me, help me, but they can't help you. And so these angels, they descend and they come with a foul smell. And they come with a rough sackcloth from hellfire. And you are sitting there and you want to scream, but your voice is not coming out. And the angel of death comes and he sits at your head. And then he says, Oh evil soul, come out to the anger of Allah and his punishment. And so your soul, 
it hides within your body because it doesn't want to come out. So your soul, it hides within your body. And then the angels, they beat that person and they pull his soul. And the Prophet wasallam he said, his soul is removed like a many hooked iron skewer. So imagine some wet wool and the way you pull a, a thorny branch through that, the way it rips and it tears at that wool. And that's the way it tears at your, your veins and your muscles. And the person is in intense pain. And then they ascend to the first heaven and they knock on the doors of the heaven and it is asked, who is it? And the angels who are carrying your soul, they call you by the worst names that you were known by on this dunya. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders that the angels do not open the doors of that first heaven. And that person's soul is dropped from the first heaven to his grave. And we fast forward now to the people have buried him and he can hear their footsteps. You're in your grave and you can hear your family's footsteps as they leave you. These people who you turn to in the dunya when you had some distress, when you needed some advice or some help, they bury you and then they leave. And this person, this evil soul, he is screaming, don't leave me. Where are you going? Why are you leaving me alone? And so the people, they leave. And then, in a sudden, he sees in the distance two angels, two very scary angels approaching him. They are called Munkar and Nakir, and they are black and they are blue. So imagine you've never seen this, and you see them approaching you. But do you have anywhere to run? Do you have anywhere to hide? Do you have anything that you can protect yourself with? So they sit that person up in his grave. And then they ask him three questions, but these angels are rough. They're not going to ask you in a polite way. So the first question, who is your Lord? And this person, he didn't learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't learn about shirk. He just lived his life. He didn't care. He was too busy chasing the dunya. So he's going to say, oh, oh, I don't know. Then they are going to say, what was your religion? And this person, he was too busy. He came on a Friday and he prayed his Jumu'ah, but after that he didn't pray. He prayed his Eid Salah, but after that he didn't pray. He didn't know his religion. He didn't care about his religion. So he's going to say, I don't know. Then the third, who was this man that was sent to you? He's going to say, I don't know. I heard the people, the masjid where I went to, the people used to say such and such, but I can't remember now. And then a voice calls out. The angels are told to furnish his grave with the furnishings of Jahannam. And this person is shown, is shown a place in Jannah. And he's told, this is what was waiting for you. If you would have obeyed Allah and obeyed the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the fire of Jahannam, it enters into his grave. And his grave, it squeezes him so tight until his ribs begin to close up on one another. Then he sees an ugly man with a foul stench. And he's coming to him. And he sits with him in his grave. And this person says, Who are you? May Allah curse you. Your face brings evil. And then this person says, I am your evil deeds. And I am going to stay with you until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So not only is he being punished in his grave, but he's with this ugly, foul stench of a man. Then Allah appoints over him, one who is blind, deaf and dumb in whose hand is an iron rod which if he was to strike a mountain with it it would turn the mountain to dust he strikes him with it until he turns to dust then he is restored to his former state and he is struck again and this man this dead person he utters a scream which everything can hear except for mankind and the jinn and he keeps striking him until yawm al-qiyamah and the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I would make du'a to Allah to allow you to hear the punishment of the grave. But I fear that if you could hear it, you would not bury your dead. So then let's fast forward now until Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the day of judgment. The coming of hellfire. The perimeter is secure. There are angels all around us. No one is going anywhere. 
All the creation of Allah is in the middle. And Allah calls on hellfire to come. And hellfire, brothers and sisters, is not a pit. It is a roaring, raging beast that is held down by 70,000 chains. Holding each chain is 70,000 angels. And Allah and the angels are standing in rows and the hellfire will come about. And when the hellfire comes, brothers and sisters, there is no scene more terrifying on the Day of Judgment than that scene. Even the Prophet ﷺ told Umar, if you did the deeds of 70 prophets, you would still be afraid at that moment. And when hellfire comes, brothers and sisters, every creation of Allah, martyrs, prophets, believers, non-believers, they will fall to their knees. You will see every ummah on their knees. All they are saying is, Oh Allah, protect us. Oh Allah, protect us. And hellfire comes in, raging and roaring. A neck shoots out of hellfire. And just like there are people that go to Jannah without any punishment or any judgment, there are people that will go to hellfire without any judgment. And if hellfire looks at you, then you are one of its inhabitants. So every person, their eyes are to the ground. They're afraid to look up. And all they can hear is the raging and roaring. Brothers and sisters, I want you to listen to this dialogue. I want you to listen to the words of Allah coming down from seven skies. Did I not tell you, O children of Adam, that you should not worship shaitan? Verily, he is an obvious enemy to you, and that you should only worship me. This is the straight path. Allah will tell us this. And indeed, shaitan has misguided and led astray many of you could you not understand this? Could you not realize this? Could you not comprehend this? Here is hellfire that I promised you. Here it is. May Allah protect us, brothers and sisters. This is not a joke. And everyone on their knees, face down, saying, Allahumma sallim sallim. Allahumma sallim sallim. Oh Allah, protect us. Oh Allah, protect us. Hell, my brothers and sisters, let us talk about hell. Hell is a place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already created. And when Allah created the hellfire, He said, O oh, Jibreel, go and look at my hellfire. And the angel Jibreel, he looked at the hellfire. He went to Allah, he said, O oh, Allah, anyone who hears about the hellfire, they will never go into it. And then Allah surrounded the hellfire with temptations, with ease. And then Allah said to Jibreel, now go and look at my hellfire. And Jibreel came back and said, Allah, I'm afraid that nobody will escape it. And the hellfire is a place of the most extreme suffering, the most extreme pain of every level that you can imagine physical, mental, spiritual pain and suffering and torment. It is a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will burn the skins of the people and then He will recreate their skins and burn the skins again so that the people in there will taste the punishment. It is a place of heat, a place of pain. The people will cry in agony for water. They will cry for a drink something to cool them and they will be given a water they will be given a drink but it is a boiling water that will scald their faces and burn their insides and they will drink from a river a river that is made from the pus that flows out of the wounds of the people of the hellfire the wounds of the people of the hellfire will ooze pus and this pus will gather together to form a river and this is all they will have to drink and their food will be the tree of zakum a tree the fruits of which are like the heads of devils 
And this tree is so bitter that if the people, when they try to eat it, they can't eat it, but they will force themselves because there is nothing else to eat in the hellfire. A place where the people will neither live nor will they die. A place where the people will fall into despair, arguing with each other, admonishing each other, criticizing each other. The fire will surround them on every place. The smallest punishment of the hellfire is that a person will wear a pair of sandals of fire and their brain will boil. That's the smallest punishment. And they will think that they have the worst punishment, but it is the least punishment. This is the hellfire. This is the hellfire. The Prophet وسلم, was walking and they heard a rumbling. And the companion said, O Messenger of God, what is this rumbling? He said, This was a stone that was thrown into hellfire 70 years ago, and now it reached the bottom. Hellfire is unimaginably huge, humongous. Al Rasul وسلم, describes the size of the people that enter it. He says, the back tooth or one of the teeth of the people who enter hellfire will be the size of the mountain of Uhud. So if the tooth is the size of a mountain, can you imagine the size of the body? And the thickness of the skin of the person in hellfire is as thick as riding on a, on a fast horse for three days. Because the bigger the object, the longer it takes to burn, right? Hellfire, ya akhwan, is something, wallahi, not to be taken lightly. The majority of the reasons why Muslims end up in hellfire for a, for a while, they are the sins that we take for granted. They're forbidden, but they're not major. And we don't take them as important. We say, it's just a sin, man. It's all right. Just a little bit. It's just a kiss. It's just a look. It's just a, a lie. It's just a little cheat. It's just a little theft. It's just once. It's okay. You keep doing it. You keep repeating it. That's the danger. So Rasul Sallallahu says with great sorrow, many of the people of my ummah will enter hellfire because they take minor sins for granted and therefore that becomes a ritual, a, a habit for them. So some people have false hope. God will forgive me. God will forgive me. You're sick. You're ill. You need to cure yourself. God cannot be fooled. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a verse came down one time stating that punishment of Allah is surely going to happen. Some of the Prophet's companions cried and weep like babies. Umar radiallahu anhu was on his camel. He fell off and he went unconscious for hours. And they will be fed food that will make them choke and there will be painful torture. Those who disbelieve in our signs, Allah says, they shall be imprisoned. Look at the word. Every time their skin burns, we recreate another layer of skin for one purpose, so they may taste the pain. Allah is surely wise and honorable and powerful. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, so these people in hellfire now are burning. They have been given clothing made of some type of fire. They have been given clouds that look like clouds of rain, but when they rain, they rain acid. Well, they have been given food, and when they eat it, they choke, and Allah says in the Quran, their intestines disintegrate. They drink certain fluids that when they bring their faces close to the dish, the skins of their face begin to burn and it melts into the bowl. There are so many descriptions that no heart can ever imagine. They begin to scream, a disturbing, terrifying sound of scream. Saying, oh, our Lord, please take us out. Take us out and let us try again. Give us another chance. If we do this again, then we are truly oppressors to ourselves. And Allah doesn't even reply to them. Allah doesn't speak to them. When they scream out like that, the angels who are in hellfire torturing them reply to them. They say to them, 
be quiet, silence. If you are to be returned, you'll do exactly the same thing. We have given you chances and opportunities and given you the warning. You heard it. You understood it, but you mocked. You mock those who warned you. You tease those who warned you. You made fun of Allah's message and messengers. It's throughout the Quran, it says this. The angels keep replying to them about this mockery. The guardian of Hellfire, his name is Malik. He has never smiled since the day Hellfire was created. He has no remorse. He has no feelings of sensitivity. He is desensitized to all types of horror. No feelings. Doesn't feel sorry for anyone. And he was the only angel in heaven whom the Prophet ﷺ, when he ascended up the Isra wal Mi'raj, he greeted him and he only replied without a smile. Every other angel smiled and welcomed him. He just said, Wa alaykum as -salam. He said, Who is this? Jibreel salam said, He is Malik. He has never smiled since the day Hellfire was created. It is recorded in one hadith that a man who lived very luxurious in this life will be dipped in hellfire once for a few seconds and then he will be asked, do you remember any luxury? He'll say, I swear by God, I never had any luxury in my life. He forgets it because of the pain. The people of hellfire will turn to the angels that are torturing them, then to the guardian of hellfire and they will ask him, please ask your Lord to perish us, destroy us. We don't want to live anymore. We don't want to live anymore. The reply comes to them after 1,000 years. They're waiting anxiously for that reply. Can you imagine? An anxious hope that you will now finally be destroyed. The reply comes to them. You are to stay in there forever. And the disbeliever, the kafir, the rejecter of faith, the challenger will say in hellfire, I wish I was turned into soil. Allahu Akbar. In the hadith it says that some people in hellfire who were adulterers, what is their punishment? There is a well inside of hellfire where the adulterers are tortured in there from time to time. They are hung with hooks from their private parts and their chests. And fire from beneath them rises and burns them again and again and again. And the men and the women adulterers will have to drink and eat from the discharge that comes out of these people in, in hellfire from their backside and their front. This is their food. In another hadith, Rasul spoke about people who consume interest riba when they're not in need of it. And some of them who are fornicators and adulterers, you know, when you're married and you commit intercourse in a haram way with other women and so on. He says, there is a valley in hellfire that has scorpions and snakes. And these scorpions are the size of camels and cows. When they sting that person, they feel the poison for a thousand years. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from that. There are many types of tortures in hellfire. We ask Allah to save us from them. There are still Muslims in hellfire. And so the people of heaven who are allowed to be given intercession to intercede for people, members of their family and friends, they will be called out and said, you have an opportunity to save members of your family and friends in hellfire. O memorizers of the Quran who applied it, come. O martyrs, come and so on. And then they will intercede. The Prophet ﷺ said in the Sahih Hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, he said, any person who has an atom's worth of Tawheed, absolute monotheism in Allah, belief and in practice, they will be saved from hellfire. One day they'll be saved, sooner or later. This is a hope, but don't take it for granted. There will be people who used to pray, but they end up in hellfire. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's in the ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hellfire to those who pray. Those who when do come to pray, they are neglectful of their prayers. So they pray on and off. They pray carelessly. They pray without wudu sometimes. They are the same people who do good actions just to show off in front of people. So when they pray, they pray to please people. People to look like righteous people. These people end up in hellfire. However, some of them who prayed some prayers sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or did some actions sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after burning, they will have a spot on their head. 
And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after people enter heaven, he'll keep coming out and going back in, saying, Oh my Lord, there are still members of my ummah in hellfire. Please save them. Oh my Lord, your promise is true and this is your promise to me. Allah gave only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam among all the prophets this promise, that he will be the only one allowed to save his followers. No other prophet had been given this privilege. So we are privileged to be from the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yeah? And so Allah will say to the angels, go to the request of my messenger because Allah loves him the most. Go! Every single Muslim believer that's in hellfire, that has an atom's worth of tawheed, take them out. And the angels will go looking at them and they will know them by a sign. The sign will be the spot on their head as we said according to the Sahih Hadith. They will save them and take them out. And they will take them to a particular river, the river of life. They'll take them there and they are unconscious and their bodies have been charcoaled, it's burnt and they'll be placed into this river and washed and then placed on the banks of the river and suddenly their bodies transform from ugliness to beauty, from darkness to light and they will still have one sign the same place on their forehead becomes the sign in heaven people will know that these are the people who were saved from hellfire they will smile to them and love them and they will come to them and they will be called Masakin Ahl Jannah, the poor people of paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from hellfire. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min ghadabika wa nar. Oh Allah, keep us away from the sins that make us enter into hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us all our sins. He's the most merciful. And we ask Him for paradise and the meeting of Him and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in, in, in Jannah. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Qul qul ya Allah, wa lakum. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين